Coming up next on Channel 6 Television, Grassy Roots with Dr. Jim Carrey and Beth Overhow. A show which will guide you down paths to healthier living by simply adjusting your eating habits. Stay tuned to Channel 6 for Grassy Roots. <music> Beth Overhow here waiting for Dr. Jim Carrey to arrive to the kitchen to uh, continue our exploration of the raw living foods lifestyle. And I thought I'd get out the, uh, the book, the Raw Food Home Study Guide Raw Living Foods Recipe Book and try my hand at one of the recipes. And since I learned about dehydrators last week, it looked like fun to make some sort of cracker. The crackers we made last week were mostly water and flax seed and flax flour, but they've got other recipes here in the book that I thought I'd try. So, and I thought I'd share that with you. This recipe calls for almonds, and it told me to soak them first, so I did. Uh, more than I really need. It said I only needed about, uh, well, it said I need two cups, but I'm going to split the recipe in half because I don't know if I'm going to like them or not. <laughs> you know, you got to err on the side of um, caution in case it's not good. So I'm going to put these in this chopper. I've already pre-chopped some of the other ingredients. I've got uh, celery already chopped. There's some more flax in this recipe. There's some onions to chop. The recipe has uh, garlic, and I'm sure you're supposed to use fresh garlic and chop that up, but I didn't have any, so this came out of a uh, container I have of powdered garlic and this is parsley and come summertime I do grow that in my in my yard and then we've got some dill which I also have grown before in my yard so okay you put this on here find the top it's a new toy that uh, Jim has left here in my studio so that uh, I can experiment at my pleasure and I'm gonna grind the uh, I didn't do something right there we go you gotta lock that in tight Pretty noisy, but there they go. Now, it's said to soak these almonds in advance. It has something to do, and I'll ask Jim about this when he gets here. Something to do with uh, enzymes or releasing. I'll just have to ask him. He's the expert on this part of it. I so I did soak them overnight, and then I dried them in the uh, dehydrator, as you can see here. That's. That looks pretty chopped up. I guess I could could have put them in my other grinder that I have been grinding the flax seeds with along the way. Okay, that looks good. Uh, get me a little container to put. I'll just put them in. They're going to be all together anyway. Okay, I'll put them in here with this. That's my onions. That, no, my celery that I've already ground up. Now, put some onion. Now the onions is going to make it kind of wet. So I guess I'll go with the, the uh, what is this? Sunflower seed. Now that's kind of odd. Yeah, They're black to, sunflower okay, seeds. Work, okay. And um, Hey Beth, what you doing today? Hey, I'm, <laughs> hi. Hey, <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm experimenting with the recipes. Uh, it's George George's Crackers Papa Dom style. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sort of playing with it a little bit because I didn't have everything you need. It smells good. You got the onion going. And th yeah. Garlic. About to and, chop that up. Mm -hmm. I was just getting ready to chop up the um, sunflower seed. I was a little bit surprised that it said to uh, grind the <laughs> seed up. But uh, see, I sprouted them first, yeah. so they're living, right? Yeah. They're going to be really crunchy that way, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what what George was talking about here, and I'll fix this in the next printing of the book. Um, this is shelled sunflower seeds. Oh. It'd be a lot less crunchy. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know, I wondered about it because anytime I've seen a parrot eat sunflower seeds, their little claws they do take 
the seed out of the shell and throw that shell on the bottom Seems of the like bird Seems like a lot cage. of work for the protein, but yeah. it works for them. And, and <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like, I left some here last night. Um, here they are. Oh, yeah. okay. Just like put these aside. I don't know. I guess they paid little parrots to shell these or something. <laughs> I like these for snack food because they, you know they're they're high in protein and, and all kinds of vitamins in it, and there's no work. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll just. Are sit. you guys filming? Yeah, I thought I'd film this while I was. Well, uh, that's why they caught me at the door. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you for sound? Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me sh sit my shirt down. Okay. Well, yeah. Let me finish this, and I know there are other things you wanted to talk about before we. Uh, Put the pizza together and the crust for the pizzas right here. Oh, you have been working. It turned working. out good, didn't yeah. it? Yeah, because the one we did last week would have been a little dry by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've uh, done that. Oh, and you're drying your almonds, so they'll keep longer. And we dried, we dried the fruit last week. Mm -hmm. um, I love these and snack this is food all bags. Yeah, I saw I them out in the lobby of the studio. Snack uh, food bags full of dried fruits. This and is nuts. the last one. They've all been eaten. Wow. Yeah. That was a great They're gone. Statement. They're yeah. gone. So I thought I'd show that to you before uh, we proceed. Okay. So now, where I was, and you know what I've left out of all this? Uh, my setup here is a big bowl to put it in because you have to mix this all together, don't you? Mm -hmm. So I'll be right back. Okay. You have been busy. Wow. You guys have used up all. This is what's left of the flax seed. That's what's left of the flax seed. Wow. You guys at the studio are really taking this serious. I love it. I've always liked chopped almonds. That's why you're so healthy. Uh huh. You must have been two of this all your life. All my life. Just Pretty bold. Uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it big enough? It's big mm -hmm. enough. Okay. I got the grind, the the food processor out that you left here. Mm -hmm. Isn't that handy with a little one? And I it love says it. pulse on there, so I took that to heart. I didn't just hold it down. Oh, if you hold it down, kind of... you'll homogenize stuff in there. <laughs> But it's so much easier than those great big ones. You, you really do have, have to, to lock it in right, don't yeah. you? I Either think side so. works. It, there, there we there go. There you go. Yeah. And this is a small one. I've and seen the the expensive it, ones yeah. at Walmart. And this works just as good for, I think it was 30 bucks, 35 there bucks there. Uh-oh, my onions aren't down in there good enough, are they? Did I take the blade out? Oh my goodness, these are <laughs> It works better with the blade, Beth. <laughs> uh, let's Let me see. Help. Just throw it back in there, you know. Mm -hmm. Put the blade. <laughs> uh, you gotta have the blade. All right, well, so that's good. So you figured honey. out the secret of the uh, food processor. Well, I'm still figuring out the secret. Wait a minute, secret. wait a minute. Okay. Now we wanna put onions in here. Okay. Trying to take over my show. <laughs> But you still need me. <laughs> Live and learn. A few more episodes from now and I'll be replaced. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Let's try that. You should have seen me making green smoothies when you were gone. Uh, did you leave the top off the blender once? Once. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what these spots were on the Let's, ceiling. Uh -huh. <laughs> there we go. This may be more onion than I need, but I figured we could use it in uh, on the pizza later, right? Oh yeah. yeah, that's good enough, huh? I believe that's more onion than I want in my crackers. Yeah, but we can so. always use chopped onion for other stuff today. All right, now I'm gonna not probably use all these either, but I'm gonna grind them up powdery so they become part mm -hmm. of the paste, right? Mm -hmm. I, I assumed that was the reason. This is fun to play with these toys, though. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing this all in uh, one, two, it's like four, four square feet of countertop. I oh, yeah. 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 The little trick I, I've been using uh -huh. is if you tap this a few times. You get most of it out. You get most of it out. Okay. And the best way to clean your grinder after um, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, stuff like that, uh -huh. flax seed will make all that other stuff that's stuck to it. Come right loose. And it's okay if there's some whole seed left in there. Oh yeah, right. that's just crunchies. Okay. Now, I call it bonuses. This will be what I grind and this will be the base, the rest of the cracker. Okay. Is that, is that about right? Okay. As long as we don't need flax for the rest of the show. <laughs> Do we need flax for the rest of the show? We got flax all over the place in our... In our okay. And we got... Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last of flax. We yeah, need a lot of flax, don't we? I do. I put it in every smoothie. I yeah. do. But it's great for omega threes, which lubricate your joints. Great stuff. You see that pretty much cleaned out your, your uh, grinder. <laughs> now the recipe just says blend, mm -hmm. which I'm going to, I guess, after I get all this together. Okay. 
Now, you know, I sort of what is there? parsley and um, uh, dill. Oh, okay. I had to cheat. I didn't, they're not fresh or mm -hmm. organic, as far as I know. Oh, they came out of the other cooking they shows. Did, they, yeah, they did. Closet. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but, you got to use it you out. You know, practicality is more important here than, than being a purist. Um, I think sometimes people turn into food Nazis. <laughs> and the stress that you do to yourself Trying over to worrying about all of this undoes all the benefits of living foods. Uh -huh. So one does what one can. Since I've got to blend this and make a paste, I thought I'd try my small. Okay, the challenge you're gonna have is scraping your paste out of whatever you make it in. Okay. Okay. Um, what I do on that, mm -hmm. and let's, let's do it your way and see how it works out. What okay. I do yeah. is I do it right there in the bowl. I take like a plastic thing and oh, yeah? some water and I blend everything that way because it's easy to scrape out of the bowl. But if you, I know what I know what the recipe says. But, I know but what we did at right. Creative Health. Oh, you blended it with the blender at Creative Health. We ended up doing it in the bowl. Oh, you ended up so, doing it in the bowl. Because you lose so much that you can't get out of the blender. Ah. Yeah. Well, that. But these little these little one shot things are interesting, and they scrape out well. You've got a small spatula. I do. And uh, I'll have to report that at my last doctor's visit. I have lost some weight, and not I don't need to lose a lot of weight, mm -hmm. but where I've lost it is perfect. <laughs> oh, you lost it out of down there? <laughs> <laughs> well, the waist. Oh, okay. <laughs> and summer is coming. And, oh, uh, swimsuit season. Yeah, All right. I'll start with this, okay? How about this? Well, you know, the average American gained eight pounds over the uh, uh, Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's holidays. Well, that's about what I've lost. But what you gained, <laughs> if you're stereotypical. Right. Well, now, see, is that, is that, to me, that doesn't seem uh, blendy enough, like pasty enough. So well, that's now that has to do with what kind of crackers do you want to make. Ah. This would be like chocolate chip cookies with nut chunks in it. Okay. Okay, and they're fun. But if you want them smoother, that's where the blender would come in. Well, then, you or know what we'll do? chopping stuff smaller before Let's you even put it Let's do it both it ways. Here. Okay. And yeah, like I say, this is, these little guys, it's probably going to be a lot easier to scrape it out of than a Vitamix. Okay, we'll just put yeah. half of it in here. And the fact you got that nice small spatula. Yeah, yeah. Gets in the corners. It all helps to have the right tools. I may have to add some water to make it fall down like it should. Okay, now, I have two blades. That one purees, I believe, mm -hmm. chops. So I'm going to use this one. I would use that one. Yeah. And I used, did I use all my water? Let's add a little bit more water. Because I learned when we made the pizza crust last week, if you don't have enough water in it, it will harden pretty quick. Right. The flax is going to work like concrete paste. <laughs> <laughs> it hardens up pretty fast. And there it goes. Telling me oh, it's let's just enough. show everybody what recipe book you're using here. Oh, no, yeah. I, I did that before you got here. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, I read the title oh. and everything. Oh, you plugged my recipe I book? I did. <laughs> <laughs> but plug it again. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. You're welcome. And when you're making crackers like this, do you still do it like we did the pizza crust and spread it all the way around and just break off little pieces? Because that's what I did with my first batch. Mm-hmm. Or do you try to make them pretty uh, little squares? Well, little... first off, do you want cookies or crackers? If you want crackers, you make it thin. Mm -hmm. If you want cookies, you leave it thick. Mm -hmm. But the thinner it is, the easier it is to dehydrate. Ah. Yeah, because when you make them thick, it's going to take a while for them to And then dry. I guess it would also matter how, long you, how much time you had to play with your food. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, that's like what we saw last week. <laughs> is that it starts to harden up after a bit. But you got the right method. Tamp and spread, tamp and spread, yeah. You know, I did this as a kid in the backyard with, <laughs> with dirt. <laughs> did you eat those mud pies? No. <laughs> but I learned about overheating them, you know, where they would crack. You know, if you baked them too quickly in the sun or if you did it in the shade, there was a difference than when you... Okay. Well, that's exactly the same premise of dehydrating, really. Do it slow, and they'll come out smoother. 
And this is the smooth ones. <laughs> that's a good science project to do it both ways. And that's really what raw foods is about because we're not dealing with chemical reactions here. You can do things in several different, in several different trials and just like you did, half this way, half that way. Find which way you like the best. Uh -huh. And pedal the rest on the kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what happens on that is the kids get the good ones and mama's stuck with eating their mistakes. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, if you wanted to, I got raisins out. If you wanted to, can you embed a little fr uh, dried fruit in these crackers and change the whole tone of the, the, the recipe? Almost make cookies because it is a nut-based, seed-based well, if you're doing Paste. pure Dr. Ann Wigmore, you would never mix fruits with your grains okay, oh. for pure Dr. Ann. However, transitional, mm -hmm. in other words, working into the lifestyle, that is much more important than being a purist. Mm -hmm. Purity will come over time and refinement. Mm -hmm. So based on that, add the raisins. Yeah, pat a bunch of raisins in there, make them yummy. Because if they're yummy, the family will eat them. And over the course of time, your taste buds start to change. And after a while, people say, oh, you know, they're really too rich with all those raisins. Oh. And you go, oh, my, our taste buds have changed. Now, technically, I could have made my own raisins, like taking the grapes and put them in the dehydrator and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but why right now? You know, I have right. so much else to And <laughs> these aren't the ones, but... I, I'm finding organic raisins in the store very commonly. Mm -hmm. um, even that brand, I, I think I saw organic once. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so it's just a matter of shopping around. Now, how about that? You think that's done? And only other thing might be you want to pat them down in there a little bit and bed them in the cookies. Okay. Yeah. This is. Whap, 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 whap. <laughs> Such fun! <laughs> Taking over my TV show. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's a great illustration of how easy this is, Beth, is we've been doing this for, what, this is week number five right now. Uh -huh. And I show up at the studio and you make crackers and you got dehydrated snacks out for the staff. They ate them all up on you. You're making, you're making your own crackers. Hey, you want to taste that one? You made these? Uh huh. Oh, wow, you've had a busy week. Now those are similar to this recipe. Mm. Well, Except, you added stuff besides uh, what I, we did on the show. I did. I sprinkled some different spices on different parts. They're very nice. Just They're to see nice. what they would be. What kind of spices did you use? Oregano. Mm -hmm. Oh, that big bag of organic or oregano. Organic I oregano. Yeah, plug the orga yeah, I left a big bag here. What mm -hmm. else? Garlic. Mm-hmm. And that was nice. The garlic's very subtle. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just haven't hit a spot. And uh, one section I did uh, some mixed peppers, mm. peppercorn ground. Very just nice. to get a hot cracker. Mm -hmm. No, it's not too hot. And I'm pretty sensitive to that spicy stuff. You may not have found it yet. Yeah. It's like these are surprise crackers. Each one will have, have a different... Little. Oh, <laughs> great. You don't have to put all those trays in there, do you? No, no, no. Okay. Let's make sure. Need. Turn it on low. And what you can do to get it started, I'm going to turn it up to like 115, maybe 120. But just for the first half an hour or so. Okay. We'll keep, since we're going to be here, we'll let it run, and that'll speed it up. Okay. Because we might be able to have those for snacks before I leave today. Okay. We got a lot of filming to do. Take 18. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the crackers? <laughs> Thank you, Beth. Right. Thank you, Will. See you here in, in a minute. You can go put your um, more formal clothes on that you want to wear. Off to wardrobe. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Grassy Roots after these words from our sponsors. Looking for a comprehensive guide on the subject of the raw foods lifestyle? Susan Shank has written an encyclopedia on the subject, The Live Food Factor. This comprehensive guide to the ultimate diet for body, mind, spirit, and planet covers every possible factor related to the subject. This compilation has received rave reviews by those in the raw foods movement. Visit www.livefoodfactor.com for your copy. The Live Food Factor by Susan Shank. 
One of the best things terrorists could do is just build more fast food restaurants, maybe add another pharmaceutical company, have a couple more infomercials, and encourage people to eat the way they eat now. And everybody's going to be dead in 100 years. They can just walk right in, don't have to do a thing. One quarter of what you eat keeps you alive, and three quarters of what you eat keeps your doctor alive. I used to get high for a living, eating on the bullshit food they sold me. Cancer rates going up, heart disease going up, stroke going up. We're poisoning ourselves with highly processed, nutrient depleted foods. One of the major problems is what we do to the soil and the air and the water and everything we take in our food. We, for whatever reason, decided we're going to spray everything with every kind of pesticide, herbicide, larvicide, fungicide. We decided we're going to genetically modify things we don't know anything about. Can we actually improve what has already been created? And the answer is maybe, but not the way we've been doing it. If you want to know what's wrong, look down at the table. It's staring back at you. Think of it as chronic malnutrition, because that's what's going on. But if we think we're going to go to the doctor and get a pill for everything, we've missed the whole point. We have been taught our whole lives to be consumers of modern medicine, which is pharmaceutical medicine. Good health makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of dollars. Now, the drug industry has every right to make money, no question about that at all. The ethics, I think, need to be very closely watched. What the pharmaceutical companies are doing may not necessarily be in the interest of our population. You can be as sincere, and you can be sincerely wrong. Approximately 106,000 Americans die from pharmaceutical drugs each year. And these are people who took the medication as directed. There is a lot more turning to alternatives because what's being done before you doesn't work. There is no magic bullet, but there is a lifestyle change that reverses serious chronic disease. It's cheap, it's simple, it's safe, it's effective. The solutions are here. They've always been here. Every single person in the world, every culture, every language, every person in the world knows it. You are what you eat. Food does matter. It's a choice. You don't have to be sick. For a full-length DVD copy of Food Matters, go to grassyroots.com slash food. You're not going to cook anymore? Or how will I live? I didn't say that I wasn't going to cook for you anymore. I said that I wasn't going to cook the vegetables anymore. And I said we're going to cut back on the red meat for a while. Where in the world did you get this idea? I've been reading some of the articles that are posted on rawdoctors.com, and they make a lot of sense. You've got aches and pains, I got high blood pressure, and it's time that we did something about our health. So, this is what I'm going to do. Come on, do it just for a little while, sweetie. To learn what Susan has learned and more, visit rawdoctors.com. Want to learn more about a raw living foods lifestyle? There's a wide collection of videos on the subject at chidietvideos.com. You can find a video on any subject that suits your interest and your budget including rare footage of Dr. Ann Wigmore's Raw Living Food Lifestyle programs. This knowledge could change your life. Check out ChiDietVideos.com. And now, back to Grassy Roots on Channel 6 TV with Beth Overhow and Jim Carrey. Well, hello, Dr. Jim, again. Hi, Beth. Hi. You clean up nice. You change uh, a little bit. Wardrobe department does wonders in the back room there. <laughs> Well, I sure appreciate you showing up when you did because you kept me from making a pretty grievous error in my uh, preparations there. But you know, you're doing the right thing, Beth, because you're experimenting. And that's how we learn. I mean, some of my best learning experiences were those green smoothies that you drink like this. Because, well, next time we'll go a lot easier on the cilantro. <laughs> okay. But, so we live and learn. But that's the neat thing about raw foods is that nothing's a disaster that can't be fixed. Nothing gets thrown out. Uh, nothing is wasted. And I like the point that you've made before that you're not causing a chemical reaction by what you do because right. you're not heating it 
and uh, the food uh, maintains its nutritional value. Hey, it is what it is. It maintains its nutrition, but in particular, all you're dealing with is flavor combining. Right. So unlike the cake with no baking soda turns into a wastebasket project, <laughs> The green smoothie with too much cilantro turns into green smoothie for three days because you just thin it out. <laughs> right. So nothing is wasted, nothing is thrown out. Right, right. Well, you know, I have been attempting to um, increase my raw living foods diet to more than 51%. I'm, I think I may be up to 70. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've you. noticed when I do my shopping, number one, I've had to go more frequently to the store. Right, that's the right way to do it. Um, number two, if I balance out how much I've, it's cost me, it seems like maybe there's sometimes it's more expensive, but then at other times it's less. It's if I do, I used to do the bulk thing where you go to the grocery and you go to the freezer department, you buy all your meat at one time. Yeah. So you'd have a $150 bill mm -hmm. for your groceries. Well, I'm still getting every now and then a $150 bill, but mo more like 125. And it's fruit juices, it's um, the mainstay things mm -hmm. that you need, the cat food, the dog food. It's, it's, you know, it's not the fresh, Roots and vegetables. The primary thing, you know, I, I talk about is not expensive to eat organic. However, in America, you know, we throw out as much as 25% of the food we buy. And if that's a nationwide number, then that says to me that we're throwing out 50 to 75% of our produce. Okay. And the perfect example is two weeks ago, I came in the studio and, and you guys have been doing a wonderful vegan thing around the studio here. And you said, we need to make a supermarket run. We're out of food. I went in the, I went in the refrigerator. I looked around. It was full of all kinds of greens and carrots and celeries and, and just all kinds of neat stuff. Basically, you're out of romaine lettuce and maybe some, you know, some of those, leaf, those uh, baby green leaf lettuces or the dandelion mixes. All you needed was some greens. You have plenty of other stuff mm -hmm. because what happens... And when I say it's inexpensive to eat organic, it's because I've gotten to the point, I don't throw anything away. When, now I may go and get some more romaine lettuce, but if Why? I buy myself heavily, heavy on broccoli or Brussels sprouts, then that's what I need to be eating for the yeah. next couple of days, okay? So I agree with you. I go to market about every four days, but when I'm done with the produce aisle, I'm done. This is true. You don't spend near yeah. as much time at the grocery store. Right. So it's not a big deal to swing by and pick up a little of this and that. And, um, and that way I'm anticipating meals for the next, I try to think ahead, two to three days because I always overbuy. And um, a after about three, four days, I'm down to, oh, all I got left is broccoli and celery. So we'll add to that. But the first thing we're going to eat tonight is broccoli and celery. If we can eliminate the waste from our from our produce buying, we cut the expense greatly. Because I think it's cheaper to be a raw living foods bacon than it is to eat the standard American diet. Well, even with the standard American diet, you find yourself throwing away food. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, Overcooking so and over the, old, the old yeah. chicken in Human the fridge. Food. People don't eat leftovers. Nobody in my house eats leftovers. Right. Nobody. So we're throwing away that food too. Right. But the other part is, I admit, is when I went to market with you yesterday, four ninety nine for sprouts, <laughs> and we're growing them here in the studio kitchen for a nickel or a dime. Yeah. You know, and I bought those sixty nine cent manager specials, and we end up uh, throwing them, them away. away. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, you grow your own fresh, and you have to keep up with that cycle. And that's what you guys have learned while I was gone for a few days. Mm -hmm was that you have to keep that cycle going. Like, oh, we got plenty of sprouts. Yes, and that means it's time to plant more. And if we keep up with that, well, I eat a lot of sprouts, but I'm growing my own in the kitchen. So, you know, you look at the cost of sprouts, I'm cutting 20, 30 bucks a week out of my grocery bill on my sprouts. Yeah. And I've had times on the farm where I just didn't feel like going to town, okay? And I've lived on sprouts for two or three days. It's a healthy thing. And I've noticed the more I, I buy and experiment that there are some fruits and some vegetables that actually last longer than others, like mm -hmm. your squashes. They all yeah. last a lot longer than... Um, Zucchinis zucchini. seem to have a shelf life like a radioactive material. <laughs> 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 That's... Yeah. But, but but that's a great thing, yeah. okay? Yeah. And it's great that you can buy zucchini and you've got them stashed away, especially when somebody brings you by a shopping bag full in the fall. Uh -huh. So these things that keep, we, we, we bear that in mind and they can go down that bottom drawer, but still. And they're usually big things that keep. 
Yeah. A spaghetti swatch. That's a pretty good sized thing. And if yeah. you're just one or two people working on it, you can make that last a long time. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So a little bit of investment in plastic wrap is well worth it. That was my next, I, you know, I've always been a container kind of person. Mm -hmm. I, I used to go to Walmart and go through the purse section and the mm -hmm. bag section. And I love opening every little compartment, just looking in it. Mm -hmm. it silly little thing. I also like containers, you know, the big ones, the little ones, finding the right, because it helps but the you containers stay don't get the, keep the air off of them. When you put it, when you wrap that cling wrap plastic around it. it, well, there's still, I, I, I just find that if I wrap it up in plastic, it mm -hmm. keeps longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the bins, and I keep bins in my fridge for greens and stuff, and I wash everything when I get home from mm -hmm. the market, so they're ready to go, and I throw them in those bins, and I can pull the bins out as quick as convenient. But when I have something like a half an avocado, mm -hmm. if I put it in plastic wrap, it's going to last a lot longer than just throwing it in the bin. Right. Because you get the oxygen. Well, off I did it. find a, a little set of containers at the dollar store, I think, mm -hmm. for less than ten dollars. That had sixteen different sizes of containers with. Oh, pots that's on. what all that stuff came from in the. Yeah. Well, I like and the fact you, can, you, you can, got a match set out there. Yeah. And you can um, departmentalize your things. You know, when you mm -hmm. bring it home from store, wash it immediately. Right. Put it, separate it into little yep. segments, and when you're ready to do a smoothie, you just dump a container in there. Yep. You know, it makes, cuts time. If you prep it, like, uh, I, I admit, I, I'll buy those fruit trays, and, and I look at it, it's like 8 or $9. Yeah, they are expensive. But if the alternative was to go out somewhere, if I went out for breakfast, I would spend that much. And I usually call somebody up and take a friend, so it costs me 20 bucks to go to breakfast. 8 or $9 is expensive. But if I would buy a melon and scoop it all out and wrap it up, throw it in a plastic container, like you say, when I bring it home, I'll eat it that way. Right. Okay. And then I cut that $8 down to two bucks. Right. Okay. For the meal. But still, when I, can, when I say about eating organic and raw is cheaper, I'm also throwing in the fact that all the money we spend on restaurants. Oh, yeah. People talk about my grocery bill went from... 50 to a hundred dollars a week or 75 to 150 a week but they stopped eating out mm -hmm. okay and in today's world that's easily 25 bucks for dinner oh, yeah okay and and then you take somebody so it's 50 bucks you just didn't spend so i look at my total food cost and compared to when i was on standard american diet and as a raw vegan my total food cost is half but i'm not eating out when i do eat out with friends Oh, I pretty much don't get past the salad bar, so my <laughs> meal is five bucks, you know, because I really ate at home before I went. Yeah. That's another secret. Eat before you go. Uh -huh. Don't go around hungry. And I, I, it really is. Oh, and then, and then there's the relationships with local farmers. Oh, yes. Okay, I met some people, and no, they're not certified organic, but they, they're not putting the chemicals on their garden. I know them. And then suddenly it's like... What's the bag of melon? Well, I don't know. Uh, uh, how's twelve dollars, brother Jim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And and you're eating a lot of melons or corn that week, whatever's in season. But gosh, um, if our bodies were designed by God and designed to eat in a cycle, and we think back ten thousand years, then maybe we're supposed to have a lot of leafy greens in the spring, and a lot of fruit in the fall. And a lot of squash and melons and, and cabbage and the and things that the keep dried, through the winter. The dehydrated. Right. You know, the ancient people probably did a lot of drying of their food on rocks and sun dried. Uh -huh. Sun dried tomato. tomato. Yeah, that's sort of a, a, a language thing that comes out. But yeah, the dried foods to get you through the winter. Now, so I just look at you know, how nature off. cycles through the seasons and plants. Then, therefore, Maybe a balanced diet isn't about I have to have fruit every day. Maybe certain parts of the year I should be eating lots of fruit. And certain parts of the year I should be eating lots of corn. Springtime is lots of leafy greens out of the woods. And seeds in the fall. And seeds in the fall. And, I also, and nuts and seeds in the fall. That's uh -huh. a good one. Um, I, I always think in terms of... Um, like eating out of the woods? Yeah. I couldn't learn all those things. <laughs> what I specialize in is only 5% of the leafy greens in the woods are poisonous. So I just memorize the poisonous <laughs> ones. <laughs> but you learn, you know, dandelions are an easy one and they're strong. But um, you throw them in with some romaine lettuce and um, a few store-bought leafy greens. And you go out in the woods and you can double the volume of salad for free. And these things, when I'm on the farm, it's really cheap to live nine months out of the year yeah. because... 
I'm getting, uh, well. Brother Jim's a single guy, gets lots of video <laughs> church socials. <laughs> so I'm always getting baskets of fruits and veggies. That's cool. Because mm -hmm. people feel for, sorry for the guy that lives so weird. He lives all alone and all he eats is fruits and veggies. Well, you know, the only thing missing from that whole scenario is the uh, freedom to hibernate during the winter. Wouldn't that be just that, the icing on the cake? If we could just all take a long nap in the winter. Well, yeah, you know, that's, that's a all show the we could do. Get to. That's a show. That's a show we should do about getting so tied to our stuff and our materialism. Yeah. And if we set aside, well, for me, um, so much of that farm is the fact that there's no mortgage on it. So it's property taxes and electric bill to live out there. So suddenly my, my material needs in terms of money compared to when I have four computer companies on two continents yeah. and what my, what my daily monetary requirement was, my, my MDR. You pay your bills, yeah. Yeah, uh, compared to nowadays, it's, it's fun living simpler. But that living simpler meant giving up fancy cars, jet planes, a whole lot of other things. You know what? I'm happier now. That's good. And that's a good note to uh, go back to the kitchen here in a minute and finish that pizza you promised. Yeah, well, these are the things that keep me going. Oh, if yeah. it wasn't for raw vegan pizza, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would still be partially sad. Uh -huh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the the, 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 the comfort foods like that are important. So, I'll see you in the kitchen. All right. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot something. I have a gift for you. Oh? Yes, I, I made it myself. Well, most of part of it. I designed it. <laughs> kind of sort of made it myself. Okay. <laughs> I bought part of it. But you kind of sort of made it. <laughs> I made something for me, too. Okay. Okay. All right. I took your apron that you had last week. Oh, yes. And no, I, I found, it, found it in the studio apron. <laughs> And that was my apron. And now this it is says, Gassy Roots. No, Grassy Roots. Grassy roots. <laughs> <laughs> and I have one for oh, me. Nice, I have a Jeff. shirt Thank for me. You. So that whenever we're in the kitchen, we Let's don't see. have to worry about uh, getting green smoothies. That's the, that's food. why that's why I say green is the thing to wear in the kitchen when we're doing this, <laughs> because it hides the stains. Grassy Roots apron. Thank you, Beth. You're that's welcome. sweet of you. So don't Mahalo. go away. Stay tuned for more Grassy Roots. See you soon. Stay tuned for more Grassy Roots after these words from our sponsors. You're not going to cook anymore? Or how will I live? I didn't say that I wasn't going to cook for you anymore. I said that I wasn't going to cook the vegetables anymore. And I said we're going to cut back on the red meat for a while. Where in the world did you get this idea? I've been reading some of the articles that are posted on RawDoctors.com and they make a lot of sense. You've got aches and pains, I got high blood pressure, and it's time that we did something about our health. So, this is what I'm going to do. Come on, do it just for a little while, sweetie. To learn what Susan has learned and more, visit rawdoctors.com. Looking for a comprehensive guide on the subject of the raw foods lifestyle? Susan Shank has written an encyclopedia on the subject, The Live Food Factor. This comprehensive guide to the ultimate diet for body, mind, spirit, and planet covers every possible factor related to the subject. This compilation has received rave reviews by those in the raw foods movement. Visit www.livefoodfactor.com for your copy. The Live Food Factor by Susan Shank. Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Carey, and sitting in front of me is Dr. Ann Wigmore's Raw Living Foods Lifestyle Home Study Program. Dr. Ann's program has been taught for over 50 years around the world at a half a dozen institutes. Normally you go, you spend two weeks, and you learn to do the program. However, when I was director of Creative Health Institute, I found that after you go home, you've been home for six months, a year, all that knowledge starts to fade. There is a need for being able to refresh your memory and the need for keeping inspired. So over the course of the last six years I put together a home study version of Dr. Ann's program and this is it in front of you. I know it's a lot. It's a 304 page handbook. It covers everything from from the kind of water to drink through energy soup to how you combine your foods. There's a 180 page recipe book that covers everything from a raw breakfast through a raw dessert after supper and everything in the middle even has Thanksgiving dinner, an all raw Thanksgiving tur dinner with mock turkey. Her basic program is in this 10 DVD set right here. But as you get into it, you get into questions. And you know, it's always like about having a second opinion, about having more details. And that's what the rest of this program is. 
Over here we have the advantages of eating raw, a video I did, one by Paul Nissan, a couple by Victoria Butenko, including her famous one, Greens Can Save Your Life. That's a three hour video. Um, I know it's Victoria's number one seller. This is all part of the home study program. A couple videos on wheatgrass, a couple videos on sprouting and gardening, a number of videos about Rejuvelac, lightly fermented foods, and energy soup. Um, a couple more Dr. Ann videos, her TV interview. Um, these four here are all about in, the benefits of the lifestyle. The, the, uh, this one called Program Review, for example, is an overview of the program at Creative Health Institute. Enzymes and food, living foods, um, living foods preparation, I'm sorry. Raw parenting, with, uh, which is important to many people. Uh, student testimonials, colon health, transitioning to raw foods, food combining with Dr. Pfeiffer. It's as thorough as I've been able to make it in the last six years. Oh, and I almost forgot two of Dr. Ann's books on tape, read by a professional radio announcer, Steve Mulkevitz, uh, a naturopathic doctor that happens to believe in Dr. Ann, so that shows in his voice. I mean, this is that's a five CD set, the other's a three CD set. This is the most thorough thing you will ever see to learn about Dr. Ann's raw living foods lifestyle. It's available at shediet.com and um, actually when you go to the website you'll find there's even more bonuses over and above this. Thank you. When truth rings, curiosity sings. Finding yourself raw curious? Dr. Ann Wigmore's Raw Living Foods Lifestyle Home Study Program has the answers. Check out SheDiet.com and satisfy your raw curiosity. And now, back to Grassy Roots on Channel 6 TV with Beth Overhow and Jim Carrey. So, Beth. You ready to make raw pizza? I am. Okay, well, you did a great job on this pizza crust. And uh, since we already had it out of the dehydrator. Now, you can do this, you know, if this was on a Teplex sheet, you'd have to, you'd have to find a baking tray to do it oh, on okay. or some sort of sheet. But this kind of dehydrator has a, uh, these plastic trays. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it right on the plastic. First off, you've got your tomato, your, your, your tomato sauce. Okay. okay. Now, Tomatoes are not traditional and Wigmore because they're a member of the uh, nightshade family, the okay. same as tobacco. But even at Dr. Ann's Institute on Sunday buffets and the, uh, uh, the gourmet feasts and stuff, mm -hmm. they use tomatoes. Okay. And again, my handy dandy little food processor. Now, I've taken a head start and uh, here, here's some green peppers, some red peppers. Um, the onions that were left over from your cracker recipe. Mm -hmm. So we'll just throw them back in. And now we get into, you can tell I'm a bachelor chef. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you didn't measure, did you? <laughs> <laughs> like, not too much onion, but I like onion. Um, flavoring. Okay, this is organic, uh, organic oregano you guys picked up, and that's wonderful. Um, I buy the dried because it's just, it keeps so long. Yeah. Um, and you can well, buy matter of fact, I brought it here. Um, I'm going to throw in this little bit of basil. But the reason I, with, with the spices and the dried spices, like mm -hmm. we were saying earlier today about how organic doesn't have to be expensive, for the cost of three or four bottles of basil like this, uh -huh. you can get a bag like that. And it's organic. And it's organic. It's organic. Imported sweet basil leaf, certified organic, um, and with the Latin name on there. <laughs> and once I open these, I just roll them up good, squeeze the air out, and keep them in the freezer. Okay. And you probably don't even know, need to do that. But again, part of what, when people say it's so expensive to eat organic, mm -hmm. it's because they're throwing so much away. Okay. And, and if you just practice good food conservation, you don't have those issues. Um, the other things here, the seeds, so a lot of that we're going to sprinkle on the pizza. Okay. So I'm just going to really make a soup out of this. There it goes. And again, like any, like any raw food preparation, 
as I'm making it. If it's too soupy, I could add. If add it's it. too soupy, I can add something else. If it's coming out too dry, throw some more tomatoes in. So best. Okay, I think that does it. Um, now, be really careful. Remember before the show started, um, we were playing with the food processor? Right. Well, when I washed it, I was being careless, and I, out of the sink, I literally picked it up by the blade oh. <laughs> and got myself a couple places. <laughs> Only one's Pretty bleeding. Pretty sharp blade. Yeah, they're really sharp. You're just picking them up carefully, and you still get yourself. So... Here's my tomato paste. Then what happened to the spatula? Ah, uh, in the sink. I've used it so many times today, there's no telling. Okay, just spread that around. You see my exact science. I have some left over. Oh, that's enough right there? I would have Well, let's, let's see how it spreads. Do you go all the way to the edge just like in yeah, the pizza? Yeah, however you want it, really. However you like it. I smell, it smells wonderful. Yeah, well that's had, adding a little oregano, a little basil, lots of onions. Hope everybody likes onions, guys. <laughs> and again, we get to play with the food. You get to play with your food. And... It's pretty. Look how You like how mushrooms on your pizza? Is. I do. Oh, look what I brought. I brought some portobello that's mushroom caps. Big mushroom. Organic. And it becomes an issue of how big do you like your mushroom chunks? Well, big enough for those that don't like mushrooms can pull them off. Yeah, okay. How about that? And I have this real scientific way. I just sort of break them up. Yeah. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, while I'm doing that, would you like some sesame seeds on there? Sure. Just all the way around. However you want to do it, just do a sprinkle. That's where this stuff is fun for the kids. They, As you get them involved in this, it becomes their foods. And obviously this is something that the toddlers can get up on the uh, stool and help mom right. with. Or grandma. Those are pumpkin seeds. Those are pumpkin seeds. Yeah. Whatever I said, they're pumpkin seeds. Yeah. And um, no, those are sunflower seeds. I mean the pumpkins, sunflower seeds. The pumpkin <laughs> seeds are what we want. Oh, okay. They're green. Yeah, they're green. And the reason we want pumpkin seeds is that it's good for my prostate, and I try to eat at least a handful every day. Just like it, this. Mm-hmm. Sprinkle them on. It'll give it another I'm, flavor. And gives it crunchies, too. Man, because I love portobello mushroom. <laughs> That's instead your of meat, Instead of meat on my pizza, or instead of, <laughs> you know, when you, ha when you go to the store and say, what kind of meat do you want to have for a side? Right. And I say portobello mushroom. And they usually will do that. Okay. Um, at this point, now. Thing with this? Oh, let's sprinkle some of that on. We got cabbage and broccoli. That's great on a pizza. It's all pre-chopped in our handy food processor. Mm-hmm. Now, what is that you've got in your hand? Okay, I made some cashew butter here. Now, this is strictly a transitional food, Beth. Okay. Um, cashews technically aren't a raw food because they're steamed to get them out of the shell. Ah. Number one. And secondly, I used, um, so I ran them in the food processor until they were like dust. I really ran them. And then I threw in a couple dollops of uh, extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Okay, now totally a transitional food, but if the difference of having a little oil in your diet makes you raw or makes you hate it, then use a little, a little olive oil. What I found over time my first year was by the time I'd been raw for six months, I stopped using the, the olive oil. Oh. Not so much my taste buds, though. It was because that's how I cut myself, was cleaning the food processor after making this. <laughs> Anytime you get oil involved, now you need hot water and soap and everything. Yeah. All the other cleanup is a quick rinse, and you hit it with the, dish, with the soapy thing. So... Um, now, is this your pseudo cheese? This is your pseudo cheese. You and I you? saved it for last because we're just going to put on part. But uh, you could actually put this on before your tomato sauce because it is so sticky. Uh -huh. So you put your cheese base down and then oh, just like a store-bought pizza, you put your cheese base down and uh, we're getting it all over my side. Let's put it over here on this cruise side. 
because I really don't eat much of this stuff anymore. It's so rich that a couple bites and I'll be full. Okay, sounds good to me. Okay. Oh yeah, it's cashews and extra virgin olive oil. It's going to be delicious. I want more on my side. And if you don't mind stringies in your teeth, this is a wonderful garnish. <laughs> I have some fresh sprouts here. And these look to me like they're the broccoli clover mix because they're so thin. But I just, I see you got all the sprout bottles labeled over there in I the kitchen. I did. I gave up and labeled them. I got tired of finding radish first. <laughs> <laughs> radish is a serious, serious sprout. You could even chop a little carrot up here and slice it. Oh, I look like I'm some and sort of pro is, doing this. And the thing is, once we're through decorating it, it's ready to eat. <laughs> you just start eating it. Or do you have to cook? You don't cook it. Did you want meat in your pizza? No. Oh, I, that's no. too bad. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Got to be careful. Got to be careful. I'm doing that like I'm sort of TV, some sort of TV chef. And believe me, I'm just a bachelor back in the woods kind of guy. Isn't that but yet, pretty? What, even with the messing around and joking, we're 10 minutes into turning that crust into pizza, which is about the same amount of time that you say, oh, now it's ready for the oven at 350 degrees well, yeah, for an hour. Yeah, and you think about what people do. They buy a frozen pizza. They have no nutrition. Oh, what, I, I remember those. Yeah, yeah. there's like a piece of cardboard on yeah. a tray, especially the ones you microwave. Uh -huh. So are we done? Is it ready? We're done. We're ready to eat, just wow. like that. And the amount of time, <laughs> I mean, it's just so quick. So I'm going to take... Um, you know, I, t I threw my microwave oven away yeah. because it changes the genetic component of the food and all the rest. But the tray that came in it is a wonderful serving tray. <laughs> and I just don't want to cut up on my plastic tray here. Yeah. So at home, I would just be grabbing chunks. Picking it off right off I'm of here. Picking it right off the tray. But I'm going to try to get fancy here. Yep. Can mm. I pick a piece up and go for it? Yummy. <laughs> I'm starting small. Mm. <laughs> That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, isn't that great? Mm-hmm. I don't miss the cheese at all. And that's why I made the cashew butter. And you can buy that in a bottle for 10 bucks. Or you can get some nice unsalted cashews. And bits and pieces are all you need. Mm -hmm. You don't need those fancy whole ones. Um, some nice unsalted cashews, a little extra virgin olive oil. I think that part's really important. And boom, there's your tea cheese. Now how or, long or your cheese? How long will this keep if you refrigerate it? Stick in the fridge, it'll last at least a week. Really? Oh yeah. Mmm. No, it's just like veggies. I mean, it is veggies. And uh I'm going to take my mom some. <laughs> if the crew leaves any. You know, the moment the, moment, the, moment the director says cut, <laughs> this is it. gone. I think you said it five minutes ago. We were so busy eating, we didn't say <laughs> They want some. As long as the cameras are rolling, we got it to ourselves. <laughs> I've already had other ideas for paste. Um, avocado paste. Yeah, you, know, you can just go off avocado and butter. They call it in the store mm -hmm. for big bucks, uh -huh. and I paid twenty dollars for a bottle of avocado butter. And then I said, wait, I've got a food processor. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming you, back Ms. and Beth. sharing this with us. Mm. You know and what? You that cashew butter part really spruces it. It up. does. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I can see all black olives on it. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to go with this. this Anything awesome. you like to eat on pizza, you can do on here. Mm -hmm. Just leave off the pepperoni and mushroom. I mean, the pepperoni and the, the bacon and, and the, the sausage rice. and the mm -hmm. meat. That's great. Yep. Well, thank you so much. Vegan pizza. Thank you. Aloha. Mm -hmm.
One of the best things terrorists could do is just build more fast food restaurants, maybe add another pharmaceutical company, have a couple more infomercials, and encourage people to eat the way they eat now. And everybody's going to be dead in 100 years. They can just walk right in, don't have to do a thing. One quarter of what you eat keeps you alive, and three quarters of what you eat keeps your doctor alive. I used to get high for a living, eating all the bullshit food they sold me. Cancer rates going up, heart disease going up, stroke going up. We're poisoning ourselves with highly processed, nutrient depleted foods. One of the major problems is what we do to the soil and the air and the water and everything we take in our food. We, for whatever reason, decided we're going to spray everything with every kind of pesticide, herbicide, larvicide, fungicide. We decided we're going to genetically modify things we don't know anything about. Can we actually improve what has already been created? And the answer is maybe, but not the way we've been doing it. If you want to know what's wrong, look down at the table. It's staring back at you. Think of it as chronic malnutrition, because that's what's going on. But if we think we're going to go to the doctor and get a pill for everything, we've missed the whole point. We have been taught our whole lives to be consumers of modern medicine, which is pharmaceutical medicine. Good health makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of dollars. So the drug industry has every right to make money, no question about that at all. The ethics, I think, need to be very closely watched. What the pharmaceutical companies are doing may not necessarily be in the interest of our population. You can be as sincere, and you can be sincerely wrong. Approximately 106,000 Americans die from pharmaceutical drugs each year. And these are people who took the medication as directed. There's a lot more turning to alternatives because what's being done before him doesn't work. There is no magic bullet, but there is a lifestyle change that reverses serious chronic disease. It's cheap, it's simple, it's safe, it's effective. The solutions are here. They've always been here. Every single person in the world, every culture, every language, every person in the world knows it. You are what you eat. Food does matter. It's a choice. You don't have to be sick. For a full-length DVD copy of Food Matters, go to grassyroots.com slash food. Looking for a comprehensive guide on the subject of the raw foods lifestyle? Susan Shank has written an encyclopedia on the subject, The Live Food Factor. This comprehensive guide to the ultimate diet for body, mind, spirit, and planet covers every possible factor related to the subject. This compilation has received rave reviews by those in the raw foods movement. Visit www.livefoodfactor.com for your copy. The Live Food Factor by Susan Shank. Want to learn more about a raw living foods lifestyle? There's a wide collection of videos on the subject at gdietvideos.com. You can find a video on any subject that suits your interest and your budget including rare footage of Dr. Ann Wigmore's Raw Living Food Lifestyle programs. This knowledge could change your life. Check out ChiDietVideos.com. You're not going to cook anymore? How will I live? I didn't say that I wasn't going to cook for you anymore. I said that I wasn't going to cook the vegetables anymore. And I said we're going to cut back on the red meat for a while. Where in the world did you get this idea? I've been reading some of the articles that are posted on rawdoctors.com and they make a lot of sense. You've got aches and pains, I got high blood pressure, and it's time that we did something about our health. So, this is what I'm going to do. Come on, do it just for a little while, sweetie. To learn what Susan has learned and more, visit rawdoctors.com. When truth rings, curiosity sings. Finding yourself raw curious? Dr. Ann Wigmore's Raw Living Foods Lifestyle Home Study Program has the answers. Check out SheDiet.com and satisfy your raw curiosity.